people that are going to be on the line with us today. We have Elizabeth M. Carmen and Neil J. Carmen, Ph.D. We are going to talk about a subject, and now we're bringing in a third guest into the show. This will be a three-way call with Leslie, and she is going to speak with our guest about her daughter's pre-birth memories. This is a story actually in Chapter 3 of this new book. I was in your tummy twice, and I said in the beginning of the show, is reincarnation real? We're going to find out. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. There you go. I tell you, Leslie, you sound great on the phone, Ned. Uh, I'm going to let Elizabeth talk to you there for a few minutes so we can uh, find out a little bit more about this chapter in the book. Well, we were really excited to meet uh, Leslie at a gathering uh, several years ago and thought, oh, gosh, I wish we had gotten that story in our first book. This is a phenomenal story. And then the opportunity arose for us to revise our book, and she's one of the first people that I contacted, and I said, hey, let's, let's do an interview. We, we want to get the word out about this because this story challenges whether a brain is essential for memory. And, uh, and this is so controversial, these pre-birth memories, because people think that, oh, we need a physical brain. How could we have a memory before we have a brain? Uh, pre-birth memories are very poorly accepted, but then when we find cases like this one we're going to share uh, where there's a validation from the mother of the child's memories, this is so convincing, and so it's a very special blessing for us, and that's why we made it a, a separate chapter in our book. And so, uh, Leslie, do you want to share with us uh, some of the things that happened uh, in in your uh, experience with your daughter when she started to tell you these things? Yes, my daughter Elizabeth. When when she was born, she just was like a very old soul, and then as she became older. She was a child that learned very, very quickly. You never had to say anything. She already, she always was off and running. And as soon as she could talk, she started saying things that she had no way of knowing. When she was a toddler, probably about three or so, she told me, Mommy, I was in your tummy twice. The first time I washed away, and the second time, I came out like a zipper. And I looked at her and I said, what? There's no way you, she would know what she was saying. She had no idea. She was truly in her, in her awareness just sharing her literal experience. Well, her not knowing the fact that, Mommy, I washed away, made total sense to me because... Before she was born, I was pregnant before, and I had a miscarriage. And when I had the miscarriage, I was in the shower. I was washing my hair, and I saw this little white thing. And I looked at it, and I thought, oh, I think that's the baby. And then the baby washed down the drain. And, and sure enough, that was a miscarriage. And then a year later, I decided to have a child, and sure enough, that was Elizabeth. And then when Elizabeth was born, she was born by C-section. And so when she says, I washed away, and then the second time I came out like a zipper, she did come out like a zipper. And she had no idea what she was saying, but that was 100% accurate. It was very uh, mind-blowing, and I just thought, oh, my gosh, this child is amazing how she remembers that. But the, the interesting thing is that she remembered... More than that, as she got older and things went on, she then started to tell me the dynamic of conversations and experiences she had with the previous um, pregnancy. And she told me how and why she chose to abort the, the pregnancy because of the dynamics that happened between my husband and I. We got into an argument and our in a, in, a, in a fight about what was going on with the baby, and she didn't want to be the cause of that. 
And so then she, she later told me, we were driving over, I remember it was the Coronado Bridge, we were from San Diego, and I happened to say, oh, that was where I was in the hospital the first time. And she says, oh, yeah, Mom, that was me. You and Dad had an argument, and I didn't want to be the cause of you two breaking up. Therefore, I decided not to be there anymore, and I went away. I went, what? She goes, yeah, I didn't want to be the cause of you two breaking up. So she says, I was a boy. And I didn't want to be a cause of that. So I decided to come back later. And sure enough, she did. And I thought, oh, my God, there's no way in the world she had no literal way of knowing what she just said. And she remembered the, um, the disagreement between my husband and I um, about the baby. And then she just made her conscious decision. She didn't want to be the source of that and and went away. And so... The interesting thing is when she talks about washing down the drain, she has total memory recall of literally going down the drain. When she was a little bit older and a toddler, every time she would go to flush the toilet, she would freak out and and run out the door. Anything that had to do with the flushing of the drain, it left such a huge impact on her. But to this day, she tries not to shower if possible. She pretty much only takes baths as a result of that stress that it left within the soul of her beingness. And she talks about it very clearly. She remembers everything about going down this dark tunnel, going down the drain, and um, being completely aware of that, and then choosing to come back later. And she remembers coming back later, and she remembers the um, birth experience of coming out like a zipper, how it got cold all of a sudden. It's, it's, It's remarkable.